All right, here we are again. Today we're going to be seeing a casting between a match between Fritzler and Tomatello, uh, both top level players in this tournament. Together with me, I have uh, Sam as my co caster. Hello, Sam. Hello. And uh, we'll try to make some interesting commentary and uh, uh, hope to see uh, an interesting game in process. Um, so, Sam, uh, tell us a bit about you. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from the UK. All right. Um, West Midlands. We have a pretty big uh, netrunner scene over here. All oh, right. Uh, lots of people playing it. So, it's, uh, it's a good environment. Um, mm -hmm. They're a little filled with Wayland decks at the minute, so... <laughs> <laughs> as, that as is this tournament, as you can see, half the players on both US and uh, um, Europe are playing Wayland Criminals decks. Yes, I can, I can I imagine that would be the case. <laughs> this is why I'm completely rooting for uh, Fritzler, because... Uh, I'm a wizard player. <laughs> be because he's a wizard player, he's uh, unique in this tournament, I think, and he's actually doing fairly well. That's really good. No, I play wizard myself, so it's, uh, yeah. it's good to see him get this far. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I, I really think that uh, many people put him down for no reason, uh, because uh, they always say, "Oh, I put all these viruses, and the uh, noise would have been better." For sure. Yeah. Mm. So they don't realize that wizard is playing a completely different kind of game. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like what wizard is trying to do, he, he doesn't even need to use his ability to be effective. What mm. he needs to do is to say to the corp, if you don't protect your assets mm. with ice, you're going to lose them. Yeah. Many people uh, say the, the corp ends up putting has to draw more ice than they would normally have to do just to protect those assets. Absolutely. And, use them at all. and uh, if you consider that many players say, oh, how many times did you use your uh, wizard ability? That's not the point because how many times did the corp yeah. was too scared? To waste a card on the play. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. That's exactly what I found. I have actually I have a few decks where wizard is a hard counter, for example, mm. because I play only with assets, and uh, he just completely cramps my style. Yeah, uh, he, he seems to do extremely well against Hass Byroid, I found, because, mm. of, because of their reliance on things like uh, Adonis campaigns and money generation. Mm. Um, and uh, his, uh, assuming you use the fixed strength Anarch Breakers, you can um, really easily get through. On the other hand, the on the other hand, he's not that good against Wayland because they play with a lot of operations. Sure. Yeah, and, and, no, and no assets. Exactly. Well, they have the occasional melance, but uh, everybody can trust that. So that's the problem. Against, I think, Hass Byroid and NBN, it, he does best. Yes, yeah. I think, I think that's, that's true. All right. So we're seeing a pretty decent start from the corporation with a Data Raven, Smart Play on the headquarters, and Tollbooth. Tollbooth, he probably won't be able to raise, or maybe he will. The problem mm -hmm. is that uh, I've seen Fritzless deck before, and it's a very, very nasty deck with... Uh, uh, or rather, I'd let you see it for yourself. But uh, yeah. you'll see soon enough that, uh, that Data Raven is going to get parasited as soon as possible. I imagine it would do. Um, although the, I think the toll booth on R and D is actually quite a smart play because, uh, well, I'm not, I haven't not seen his deck. I don't know if he's running medium, but mm. it's one of the easiest ways to shut down medium is putting a toll booth on there. Yeah. The economic cost of trying to get through it um, is is just too much to make yeah. medium runs. But uh, we're going to see a parasite first thing on that uh, data raven. I assume we see a cyber feeder plus parasite immediately, or maybe another run on R uh, and D. We'll see. How he's going to play it. But I'm almost certain he will go to see a parasite coming to play this turn. So yeah, spoilers. Quite good stuff coming out. I'm really impressed with the oversight AI. I can't wait to play it on my stronger together. Uh, yes, uh, I, I haven't actually built a Stronger Together deck yet. I have um, one that is... I think it's starting to come into its own. There we go. Hourglass. There's the Parasite coming down now. There it is. So yeah, here comes Data Room. I mean, Data Room. Uh, parasite on yeah. Data Room. Um, so yeah, uh, the Oversight AI, I have a Stronger Together deck that is almost there. It's pretty decent, even with E3 against me. Um, mm. But uh, it's, it lacks something, and I think Oversight AI is that something that I'm lacking. Mm. Plus the new agenda that 
removes to clicks. That's going to make it so good. I think I think that's that's a very versatile agenda as well because yeah. um, it's not forfeit after scoring, is it? You can forfeit at any time. Exactly. So yeah. I, I have so many plans for that agenda. I'm going to put it at least three different decks now. Play it after they uh, hit after they pass your daughter even. Play it after they yeah. uh, they uh, hit the snare. Play it after they uh, you encounter an itchy. It's so versatile. It's just the only problem. It's only one point. So. Um, you're going to have to put a lot more agendas in your deck. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I was I, I was um, watching your game where you um, uh, were playing the MBN deck mm -hmm. um, that is designed to punish people for getting tags. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking that that agenda would be really, really oh, good. Oh, yes. Except for the fact that you would, you know, it would increase your uh, agenda count uh, by a fair margin. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's exactly the problem. I, I, I'm already in that deck. I'm already struggling with uh, the amount of cards I have. And mm -hmm. I, I'm really not sure if I can actually fit that card in. I think I can't because I would have to actually take out Tag Punishment, which actually defeats the point of the deck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's uh, an easy way to get Tags to stick. Uh, not so uh, much, not so much. My problem was not so much getting Tags to stick in that deck. Um, I mean, you can make them uh, not be able to remove attack for one turn, maybe. But uh, usually, I don't. They don't get to um, avoid attacks from data ravens. I mean, they can obviously can go through the data raven once. Uh, but usually, that's not my problem because uh, I set up win-win uh, situations for me. Oh, that's nasty. That uh, that's Nictor Beta yeah. might actually hurt. <laughs> you seeing uh, Fritz Leskant? Yes. Yeah. Just saw it. He just threw that uh, sneak dot beta, which is yeah. actually if he actually goes with that sneak dot beta, he may get snared, and that's going to be very bad. So I'm curious well, to see how he'll yeah. play it. I Fritzl is a very very uh, careful player, so I really doubt he's actually going to play it now. I'm suspecting he's going to make sure he has economic advantage and stuff to uh, avoid dying randomly, and then uh, start running. I think for sure Wizard does need to be played a lot more carefully than Noise. Um, Are you sure? I think so. Yeah, I, I, I've I found him. Uh, I mean, assuming you're assuming you're comparing the standard Wizard build to the standard mm -hmm. Noise build, mm -hmm. which Noise just tries to overload the court with viruses. You know, Noise doesn't need to play very carefully because all he cares about is getting his viruses mm. down as fast mm. as possible and making the corpse spend money along the way. Wizard, if Wizard starts to lose programs, hemorrhage programs, he can really take some hits. Archer is the worst thing for a Wizard to deal with, I found. Mm. Well, I think it's just well out of reach of Mimic. Mm -hmm. I think we'll see him playing that. Yeah, I was about to say he's going to play the Data Sucker and then they get the credit. <laughs> I've learned to read Fritzler like a book. <laughs> um. Is uh, aimed to kill that Data Raven ASAP, I guess, is the... Mm. Well, uh, he he does. he's not in a hurry at the moment. He's just going to let that Data Raven expire by itself. And mm. uh, maybe if uh, he'll try to run if uh, the corporation um, decides to wipe viruses. So I'm suspecting mm -hmm. he'll keep that, uh, imp, that imp in his hand until the corporation wipes the viruses and then just play it and uh, perhaps uh, start running uh, HQ and see how it goes. Um, but yeah, uh, the wizard, yeah, this, I guess you have a point. He does play a bit more carefully because he doesn't have the recklessness of noise. He can just uh, yeah. play the viruses and just go for the glory run in the archives. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is indeed very much the way Fritzler is playing. There was a game one of the games I casted from him where his opponent had something like um, four agendas in their hand and uh, Fritzl would just not run his hand because he was very playing it very, very safe. He would prefer to hit to steal the agenda from the floor than run a hand, even though he had seen almost no agendas. That, that's one of the things, because because um, the fixed strength and outbreakers, once you have things like Ice Cover and Data Sucker in play, are so strong mm. in terms of uh, the, you, you can run so economically with mm. them. getting through, you know, code gates for free, getting through e every barrier for one. Yeah, yeah. 
Mimic is the only thing that really costs you anything. Um, you can you can really hit those remotes hard as soon as an agenda goes down. Mm. But it does mean he's kind of vulnerable to fast advance because of that. that. Yeah, but uh, I don't think uh, Wizard is the kind of guy who is not so much uh, against fast advance because he can trust your sunsons, he can... Um, Yes, he, that's, that's what I try to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he yeah, will yeah. he will yeah, get into your remotes just to face check your pad campaigns because why not? You know, he's not losing anything. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Here's the protection. But uh, unfortunately, he's a bit unlucky in that he doesn't have any economic uh, cards yet. So I'm suspecting. Yeah, say, seem bit, yeah. yeah, he seems very very slow at the moment. But uh, he has that parasite down. It's uh, doing something while he's waiting. And I'm suspecting we'll see him either draw a card or just take two credits. Alright, he already took, uh, he already done. Yeah. So he's playing very safely, very, very uh, conservatively. That's the way I have ex known to expect. And uh, what will possibly happen is as soon as that uh, data even expires, he's going to run once to see what it, uh, the other card is. Sadly, it's an archer, which uh, isn't ideal. Hmm. Well, he can face check an archer. He, the he will lose a fate attacker. That's not a problem at all for him. He, I think he's absolutely Probably willing to face check him. Yeah. Hmm? yeah, no, no. I mean, uh, there's a point when when uh, you, you can't afford to yeah, run absolutely. Uh, any, any unres piece of ice. Uh, the uh, problem is that the, any of these cards can be an archer now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that's my biggest fear against Wayland is when they mm. start chucking ice down. So what's yeah. that that's just come down? That's a shadow and a no, no, not shadow. You can pick at the cards if you want. Oh yeah, so we got a very uh, moderate uh, server, but uh, he won't be able to pass it unless he puts a breaker down. And if he puts a breaker down, he's vulnerable to shadow. So yeah. let's see how our conservative friend plays it. Good thing is that he does have the Crypsis, as soon as he gets some economic cards, he can break through uh, an Arthur if he really has to. Mm. But the problem, on the other hand, is that he doesn't have any money. He's drawn zero economic advantage. So I'm guessing we saw him growing four cards now, and we'll see him uh, drawing some cards aggressively next turn. And uh, well, on the other hand, is a bit... Sorry, uh, well, and on the other hand, he's a bit unlucky he doesn't draw any agendas, even though um, he probably would really like to have some agendas in his hand right now. Mm. Let's see if he's going to uh, put a trap down. What I really like to do is um, put my snares along with my important upgrades. In which case, if they, uh, if they decide to, you know, uh, just check what I'm putting there, uh, I may lose my uh, my corporate troubleshooter, but they get a force full of snare. Yeah. Um, though against uh, criminal, I will generally always keep them in hand just as a threat. But uh, this is the, this is the cleverness of having a sneak door beater in a non-criminal deck is mm. uh, you 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 probably won't you probably won't leave that snare in hand. Yeah. The game thus uh, exposing. Uh, your, your, uh, yeah. Um, on the other hand, yeah, you can see here now, I'm really sure the Wayland is thinking hard about wiping viruses. Which is what Fritzler is expecting at the moment, that's why he decided to just take credits. Um, and I think the Wayland will do it, because he doesn't want Archer to be the only thing protecting his uh, HQ. And uh, because it's a one-trick pony, yeah, the, uh, he, w he will be forced to raise it. Uh, to stop, uh, to stop the um, wizard, and uh, it's not going to do as much damage as he would like to. Although, would it be necessary for him to to raise the archer? Um, if he plays him, if he plays him, I expect he would. Because uh, unless he hits the uh, the snare, everything else uh, it's going to be very painful, painful to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There we go. So he wiped the viruses, which gives. Uh, uh, Frisler, uh, another turn to uh, find those economic cards that he's looking for. Do you think uh, he t took the six? Is he is he expecting to draw into a liberated account? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's going to power draw, I think. 
Alternatively, he may uh, play the ember and go for sneak or beta, although I don't expect him to because uh, a snare will absolutely slaughter him. Oh, nice. I don't think he's going to want to play it though until that data raven goes down. A Count Siphon is an interesting choice given the uh, the heavy influence cost. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and I have their own, you know, account sucking thing in value. Yeah, yeah. But, but obviously Account Siphon is a much bigger economic swing. Yeah. Basically, so the, quite an interesting choice. the best thing about Account Siphon is it allows you to run immediately after it and hit a remote server that's protected. You not only uh, make the corporations uh, not able to raise their, ca their cards, you also get to uh, have the money to break through any uh, cards that are there. So once you're safe mm -hmm. from tags, it becomes very, very nasty. So I do remember one time when I uh, did account siphon a corp down to zero money. Mm -hmm. um, I ran on a remote server that had two unres pieces of ice. First one was a... Um, uh, pop up window. Mm -hmm. Second one was an ice wall. <laughs> <laughs> so that was annoying. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you do, generally don't want to uh, account siphon without any uh, knowledge. No, that's very true. Um, it, we played the Crypsis, which is uh, quite this... interesting because it makes him a suddenly a lot more threatening. Mm, the absolutely. Game. The problem is he still has to be afraid of an archer. And uh, losing Cripsis will hurt, um, but I suspect he's willing to lose a Cripsis to uh, face check an archer. We'll have to see how it goes. Mm. Still, he's, uh, I think he's um, really uh, annoyed at the moment that he hasn't drawn any economy cards. And he has to play so slow. It is, it is a huge game changer I found that um, in my wizard deck is whether or not I draw into my economy mm. early on because they, they chain together so well uh, using your liberated accounts to mm -hmm. power more liberated accounts and you end up with very significant economic advantage by the end of it. If and Tomat Tello goes for a draw. He's looking for those agendas. He's saying, okay, it is time to uh, proceed. He has the economic advantage. So I think he's uh, planning to get down that uh, hostile takeover next turn and uh, play it. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually plays that corporate troubleshooter now. Playing it into the um, the remote. Yeah, yeah. To force visitors to run on it. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It will uh, give also the fear uh, of uh, having an archer in that remote. Which might actually be a good bluff because it might uh, make a Fritzel around the central and need uh, the archer there. Let's see how she plays. I do expect uh, that Wizard will just uh, slowly uh, advance, slowly uh, just draw more cards and uh, ignore the corporation for the moment. He's not really in a position to uh, fight him. Yeah, he played the Hadrians. Which is interesting because he obviously won't have the credits to raise that for a while. No. He's obviously looking he has enough to raise the other two, so like, he's not worried about it. Though, he, they're well within Crypsis's range, so... Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, he's going to go That's to raise it next turn. Yeah. It's a decent play, it's a decent play. Um, I don't think uh, Fritzl is going to run it, though. I think he's just going to let it go. Yeah. I mean, I, I would let it go, um, as I, I, it, I think as Wizard, it's fairly easy to swing games in your favour uh, once you've got your whole yeah, game, yeah, yeah. given that a corp can have all the money in the world, but when you can get through their ice for cheaper than it takes them to res it. Yeah, and uh, once you get the, uh, once you get those uh, extra bad publicity plus another cyber uh, feeder or so, we're going to see yeah. an, a, a ridiculous amount of runs. Oh no, I'm expecting. He's th I think he's going to run. He's going to run on the HQ. No, RD. Okay, fair oh, enough. He's going on RD. Yeah. I don't think he he can't raise anyway, so he's just going to check it. Yeah, he wanted uh, the corporation to raise the RD and be able then to run the remote server chip. Yeah, I wanted him to raise it to get the cash, possibly preventing the agenda being scored. Mm. Uh, but. 
But Tomatello cannot raise anyway. Uh, we cannot see it, no. We can uh, manually look at the deck, but it's not so important. Yeah. If it's something important, we'll see. So he trusts the Melans. That was a nice snipe. I think he's going to run again. Definitely that would be the best thing to do because uh, now that he knows that the Corp uh, possibly can't res that piece of ice, uh, possibly seeing it is a toll booth. That's yeah. what I would be thinking. Even if he hits a snare, he can clear the tag next turn. So it's not a big deal. And it gives him. But the big thing is the deck data sucker counter, I think, because um, every data sucker counter puts him uh, uh, closer to being able to mm. uh, break through an archer um, much more cheaply than he would be able to otherwise. Mm. Alternatively, he could uh, play the imp and then run again, but uh, it's much more dangerous in case you hit a snare then. Yeah, that's true. People are too nice, they keep uh, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> So, he trusted the Corporal Troubles, that was a very good use of Wizard's ability at the moment, yeah? He spent yeah. just three credits, and he got two Data Sucker tokens, and he trusts some good cards. Now, the question is if Fritzel wants to run again, I suspect he won't. Yeah, because the threat of hitting a snare um, on your last run against Wayland, yeah. even with um, uh, Pass Creek Carapace, it's not ideal. No. Though he doesn't have any resources, so, mm, you know, unless he suspects. Yeah, I think he won't run also because if it is a trustable card, uh, he won't be able to, um, to trust it anymore. Actually, where did the... He has did he How come? Where... Did he use the, Ah, he was using the bad publicity. The bad publicity credit, yeah. Yeah. It's like a stim hack, isn't it? You can use it on absolutely anything, so. Yeah. Okay, let's see. He's going to face check this uh, wise wall, I guess. But he can break it. I guess he's, uh, the corporation is going to raise both the ice wall and the enigma. And Crypsis can only break one. Yeah, he can break both of them if he really needs to, but then he's going to lose the Crypsis. So I'm suspecting he won't. But he is... He, he does so that he is willing to lose both his uh, stuff. Actually, no, he's not, because can Crypsis break an archer now? The archer will go down to four uh, strength. He has three credits, uh, two credits to spend. A fast four, six. It will give him... He needs four. I think he has enough... Yeah, he has enough to, to cancel an archer subroutines. So he's not worried about an archer at the moment. He has just enough to break everything except the money making, which he doesn't care. Of course, it's too small eyes, so uh, that's going to instead just uh, wipe the viruses from Crypsis. Oh, nice play there. He just wanted to waste his money. He's not even worried about... Uh, he's not even trying to check the next card. Though, uh, with the corpse sitting there on, th on four credits, perfect amount for an archer uh, mm. as that last card. So, yeah, that yeah. might have been something he was thinking of. Yeah, probably, probably. He can't break an enigma and an archer. So, he's, as you said, he, as you said he's playing it very, very uh, conservatively. So, we're going to yeah. see that uh, second hostile takeover being scored, which will allow that toll booth to be raised. But then again, with two hostile take with two bad publicity, that toll booth is not as strong as it used to be. That's very true, yeah. Um, but then there was also the fact that now you know there's potential for two archers to be raised. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Point agendas down, so, absolutely. Uh, he has to be very careful. Yeah. 
I think he may even uh, consider, once that data even goes down, he may even consider start uh, doing that um, uh, account siphon, especially uh, if he can get some economy, because then um, he has enough to break an artery if he really needs to. The problem will be, of course, the data revenue, that data revenue needs to go down. Do you feel like uh, the corp um, is likely to um, clear I, viruses? I think in, um... I think he will. Uh, it depends on how many agendas he draws, but I'm fairly certain he may actually clear them now, uh, just to avoid losing his data even uh, next turn, without having to raise Archer. But then again, if he does that, he is going to lose. Uh, uh, he still has an agenda down, which is uh, problematic. So we're probably going to see him score it. Let's see. No, he's he's waiting for uh, an agenda in his country. He can replace it immediately. All right. What I'm expecting we'll see now is maybe an R&D run to force the corporation to raise something and maybe then an HQ run. We'll see. Very good play there, but uh, by the corporation, he's not rushing into it at all. Most players would just uh, take that hostile takeover. I think, by, I think, believing there is a good choice because it, it still makes the. Um, uh, I mean, it does several things. It, it says that um, there is very possibly an archer on this server, and I want you to hit it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I'm leaving that agenda in there on the assumption that you'll hit it. Um, or it says it's not an agenda at all, don't bother running on it, and the, the runner has to figure out those it is, and obviously it's neither, it's a bluff. So. Mm. so Fritzl has something he's interested in, let's see what Kurul's question she has. Yeah, it's a classic question. Same yeah. with same with uh, Tolbooth. Some, yeah, somewhat confused by the fact, though, that with an Ice Carver, of course, um, because you encounter it at the reduced strength, that could kill off a thing before any of it's been encountered. Yes, yes. Correct. A lot of people sort of um, confuse the two. All to do with the paid abilities timing, isn't it? Yeah, this um, it's a bit. Uh, it has a bit of a complex timing structure in that uh, you have w the different times when paid ab <laughs> when paid abilities can be triggered, and uh, when uh, on encounter and permanent abilities and which goes first. So it's always a bit of a rules question. Okay, so let's see if we're going to see that archer now. I suspect we will, but I I'm think we will, yeah. but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He's, uh, he, there's not a lot he can actually see there, but there, we're going to see it. He has just enough to uh, break through without taking any damage. He's just going to let him get those two credits. Whoa! Hello, hang on. Very overzealous court there. <laughs> I know the feeling though, which is um, that uh, just resed your archer and you really uh you, you're looking forward to uh the pain uh and you just you just immediately go into it figuring some routines uh without considering whether or not the um 
it's uh, a lot easier to do online than it is. So, um, Mr. has uh, six credits to spend on this run. He can reduce the archer to strength four. Exactly. So then he has the four credits to to boost the strength of Cripsis. One bad publicity, one uh, one uh, cyber feeder. He has just enough not to get anything trust. Yeah, I think is probably what he's going to be aiming for. There. Exactly. He doesn't. He's going to doesn't care about anything. Run. Okay, so rewind. <laughs> if he actually had um, uh, two more credits, he would be able to uh, trust that uh, uh, that uh, data raven as well. Yeah, I think it was right to run on the first click, given what he knew. And I think I think the archer on HQ is an interesting choice because you know what we know about anarchs is that they're going to threaten R and D more than they are HQ. Um, so I, I find it really interesting that he decided to archer up um, uh, HQ. Uh, obviously, mm. the data sucker, uh, the parasite rather on uh, data raven is a big threat. Mm. So maybe it was just you know Archer was the piece of ice. Well, he he is uh, fairly afraid of him hitting, imping his uh, scorched earth. So uh, mm. he really wants uh, the Archer not to be the final, uh, the last line of defense. You can expand the chat window, by the way, in case you want to. It's a bit tricky to find the spot. It's uh, just between the chat window and the player cards, but uh, you can actually uh, uh, grab the window there. You can actually expand it to read things a bit better. Uh, I see. Yeah, that does help. So I think I'm not absolutely uh, really sure if that hurt uh, the corporation more than the runner. We'll have to see how it goes because uh, you really want the uh, archer to be uh, hurting the other player. You, you definitely want to get the trash routines to go down for sure, and I think having and not ha not uh, having not had those go off, um, the corp is not exactly on the back foot, but um, he now has to play a lot more strategically than he could do if the winners rig had been trashed. Um, mm. I feel like he's going to have to get that um, agenda scored very quickly. Um, so that the threat of another archer is at least there. Especially now that those data sucker counters have gone. You know, another archer is well out of reach of... Uh, yeah. Prisla, so... So Fritzler was actually, by accident, having just enough to avoid an archer to the face. Had he had one less uh, credit, two less credits would have been uh, not so much more than one less credit because one less credit would have taken his scripts away. But uh, as it was, he just lost uh, uh, nothing and he saw that archer, which is going to be quite powerful. 
And of course, the um, the corp now has now has to clear viruses. Yeah. On their next turn. Well, maybe probably probably, probably he won't because his this archer is fairly decent now, and he has another data even to play that if he really wants to. What I'm suspecting we'll see. The same turn, so he does leave HQ potentially open. Uh, can play what next? Uh, yeah. Same turn. I mean, he, he, he won't be able to play Data Raven on the same turn. That, uh, that no, but Raven but it's not wide open because there's an archer there. Uh, yeah, this is Frizzron. I'm just interested if he could uh, get through that archer on the next turn if he wanted to. Nah, no way, no how. There's no way he can get it through. And it, he, even if he could, he, will, he, he won't uh, probably do it because there's no point. He... Um, the cost to break through an archer just to see one card in HQ is just not good. What I'm suspecting we'll see, we'll see score that uh, second uh, hostile takeover and play the agenda directly into that server, which will threaten another archer and thus probably make uh, Fritzer uh, avoid running that server. And if he does run that server, he still has that Hadrian's. Still here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm just. Uh, he'll still be out of range of the Hadrians though, because he'll only gain. If he's All right, 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 correct. He has to advance it as well. So yeah, so he won't be able to raise that Hadrians, but he can threaten an archer. So it's unlikely that he will run. For sure. Although it might be actually be a decent play to just run. Uh, run if naked and see if you can actually face check an archer because at worst you just lose eclipses so it's a it's a tricky situation very risky place might actually take the op the option to uh, to do it losing just one eclipses for uh, to see an archer is not a bad deal okay so he's not going to score it I'm suspecting he's just going to take credits and he's going to lose his data raven poor Frittel is still penniless still hasn't found any source of income in this game but even with that he's done very well I think yeah to, yeah um, that run uh, that perfectly uh, costed run actually helps him What did he okay, do? Ah, he's bluffing. <laughs> he's bluffing so bad. He wants to trick. Uh, he wants to trick uh, him to think that he played an asset there. But it's actually a corporate troubleshooting that he didn't have to do it. <laughs> oh, naughty, naughty. So that data raven goes away. There we go. Let's see if Fritzel took the bait. It will be interesting to see. This is where I... Well, it's not a big bait. It's not a horrible situation because... Um, it's only one card that advanced, so Fritz can probably afford to wait to see if it's advanced or not. I think it might, that, that's generally what I, I, I would do. Um, given that um, posted bounty is somewhat of the um, red-haired stepchild in the family of Wayland agendas at the minute, mm. Um, mm. he's probably more. It's probably more likely to be a. Um, if, you think, if it is an agenda, either a Project Atlas or a um, private security force or one of the uh, five to three. I'm suspecting he he's... Probably a board. I'm suspecting what now Fritzler is thinking is whether he wants to uh, deserve that parasite on the Archer. But I don't think it's worth it. No, he's just going for some money. 
and next time he's going to draw probably or even run we'll see how it goes uh, it's actually quite surprising I'm usually um, I'm used to Fritz always drawing cards and it's funny to see him just uh, staying with what he has and not actually trying to draw more does he need more that's the question um, he needs economy I think uh, just taking credits uh, for credits at turns uh, it's really hurting his uh, his game so I don't know how he's going to play I'm guessing he's think he's waiting to see how the corporation is going to do it if he starts advancing he has enough credits to do a run without fearing Archer he has I think uh, just enough to uh, break an Archer if he has to um, and uh, if the corporation doesn't do anything uh, wonky then he can just uh, sit back and uh, just throw some more cards or maybe take some money so there we go, oh there is posted bounty, there it is um, and that's the data raven that's gone down on HQ mm -hmm. so it's in the city um, I think he's probably going to play his Atlas before he's played his Process Bounty. Because he so, yeah. probably will want to have that second Scorched in his hand before he actually tags him. But it's tricky. Both of them are without any economy. So it's going to be tricky to mm. see how both can actually get it and now uh, Fritz has two extra bad publicity tokens a turn so okay let's see he's going uh, to advance once I think yeah there we go he advanced once and his bluff didn't work Fritz didn't take the bait I th I'm pretty sure he's willing to uh, lose that uh, posted bounty in order to I keep his atlas On the other hand, Fritzl doesn't need to be that worried because he is protected from a single scorched earth and he can only play one scorched earth if that's a positive bounty. Nope, he's probably going to run. Let's see if he's grinding, going to run R&D first. There we go, that's another D. To make sure that the corporation stays uh, honest and won't raise anything. It's actually a very it good play. It's it's a very decent play to run R&D at this moment because the corporation... I, I, I think so. Yeah, because the corporation really wants to keep that money out. So uh, he's unlikely that he's going to raise anything. So you effectively, you use the corporation's bluff to get a free pick in R&D. It is interesting that he decided to put two uh, counters on Crypsis, given that he knew that the, the Corp wasn't resing um, anything when he had seven money. Um, but now the Corp has a second he has dice. Advice. He, the second dice might be cheap. And it is. So now he can actually break that dice with almost no cost for him because he has a bad publicity and the, uh, uh, and the cyber feeder. It will cost him... Three Two bad publicity. Two, two bad publicity, yeah. And uh, it did cost the corporation three credits to raise that. So it's a good trade off. He may even decide to jack out after a run, thinking that uh, whatever it is that the corporation has down there uh, can't do any harm anymore. we go so breaking that for free if you ignore the virus token and now he actually has a target for his uh, uh, he has actually has a target for his uh, thingy for his uh, mimic and those data sucker counters are actually hurtful yeah it's the very very hurtful yeah If he manages to get three of them, he can instantly go for uh, uh, for his account siphon run on HQ. Yeah, 
the number of credits he has at the minute is actually quite scary for the court. Three. No, the um, uh, Frizzler's uh, the amount of credits he has puts credits seven. within range of yeah, um, yeah, seven credits. And he does not have to be afraid of an archer at the moment, yeah? So he can run that server and just face check whatever it is. Of course, he's going to be rebuffed by the uh, ice wall if he does. But uh, still. I, I almost think it was a, do, you, do you think it was a good idea to res the shadow there? Because... Um, um, debatable. He probably didn't want the, the runner to just get a free run over there. Um... But it's almost a free run for Fritzler anyway. Given his, no, uh, because now Fritzler has to think about running that remote and he doesn't have the, the data sucker token anymore and he has one less virus. Don't forget that, that he still loses the virus from Crypsis, which might be just as important. If he didn't raise it, Fritzler would get a free look in R&D and he would probably not run the server. But so now, now that he has no archer threat, that, that was my thinking. Yeah, um, it's, I don't know, if, if he had the money, if he didn't spend anything for that uh, Crypsis, he could actually break a, uh, he could actually break a Crypsis, an, uh, an Archer. Yeah. He had two bad publicity plus one data sucker plus seven credits and one uh, data sucker token. It would cost him nine if he used the data sucker or ten if he didn't and uh, still not get any damage from it. So, again, the archer wouldn't have been that nasty. And th that's the whole point of archer, you want him to be nasty. Mm. Of course, you can also use him for economic uh, disadvantage, but you're slowing down your own game. There we go. So Fritzer is prepared to just uh, let the corporation score that agenda, and I, I would do the same, because uh, even if it is a, a, what you call it, even if it is a posted bounty, he can barely do anything with it and he will be penniless afterwards. So mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing the corporation knows this and he's just going to take money this time. That uh, posted bounty is very uh, safe in that server at the moment, as far as the runner knows. It's a really good play from both players, yeah. It's uh, they're all both playing very, very smartly. So how many uh, rounds is this in into the tournament? This is the sixth round. So after this round ends, uh, we know who is in the last uh, final sixteen and who uh, has won the Swiss tournament. I think uh, for Europe, I think Mavolio has already won it because I think he's completely undefeated until now. Hmm. I think he's lost like a, a few a few games, but no matches yet. Yeah. And uh, I think he played with Fritzler, and if I remember correctly, both won with their corporations. Hmm. It was actually quite uh, interesting to see. Very good plays from both sides. It wasn't just bad luck, but uh, quite interesting. So yeah, uh, since they're pretty lull in the thing, uh, Oversat AI. It's a um, card I'm really uh, planning to use to uh, boost up my uh, uh, Hasbiroid uh, Stronger Together deck. As I think having a first turn Janus is just terrifying. Uh, the th yeah, definitely the threat of that is... Uh very strong. Do you, do you think? Um, do you think what? No, go on. Um, do you think that um, uh, Hourglass is also going to see? Oh yeah. Um, from the together decks. Um, Hourglass, I think, uh, is. Um, I'm convinced it's super good with uh, Hasbiroid stronger together. Uh, perhaps in the other uh, house, it the other uh, might be better. 
because it's so expensive and stronger together are very poor. Uh, but I will play the shit out of it in my uh, in my uh, Jinteki uh, replicate perfection. Yes, yeah, I, I, I could definitely see the, the usage of it there, but I'm, I'm just thinking um, things like um, early Ichis um, in well, any house borrow deck aren't that effective um, because you only need to target the, um, the trace routine mm. um, with, your, with your click. Yeah. Uh, having an hourglass there just means that you can't afford to run into an early... Yeah, but on the other hand, house glass traced. costs six, doesn't it, or five? I believe it's five for four strength. Yeah, it's yeah. very expensive as well. It is very expensive. Um, and I really, when I, I wouldn't want so much to play an hourglass as my last card because any other card I play in front of it is going to be wasted. If it's a Byroid, they can just go through both side cards without a uh, problem. Well, um, uh, my I run in uh, Sunset. In my house, by the yeah. way. Yeah, that's the thing. If I because, because all of it is the design of ice is yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, I have a sunset. I had the sunset in my ST deck. Um, didn't work that well, but only had one. Um, so, what uh, I think we'll see is, is indeed more. Uh, uh, we'll see more ST, uh, more um, uh, sunsets in uh, has bio decks now. I'm actually curious why he chose to do that. He can actually break that with uh, the. Um, he can easily break that with his. Uh, uh, what you call it? With his mimic, and I think it would have been much much better if he actually put it on an archer because uh, even three tokens, two two, two or three tokens uh, from the parasite on the archer allows the mimic to break it now. Mm -hmm. So the corporation is forced to either uh, clear virus every three turn or allow his archer to be bypassed by a mimic. So I'm really curious why he chose to do that. I really don't, didn't like that move, to tell you the truth. What is the card in front of it? Shadow, so <laughs> didn't do much. Well, I it's mean, going. It's, it's there now mainly just to um, make uh, the time of Crypsis uh, the, the, the major factor of the game. Um, that if Frizzler doesn't want to run on any of these servers, he's going to spend so much time stocking up on virus counters on Crypsis that it becomes somewhat prohibitive for him. So it's not even about the fact that the Shadow is. Um, you know, really easy to break uh, for Frizzler. It's just that the Crypt itself becomes vulnerable to mm. big ice decks. Yeah, yeah, true. But he does have the Mimic on the hand. He doesn't have to even use... Uh, uh... He does, and that's the, that's the thing. Tom Taylor doesn't know that, so I'm wondering if, if it's, uh, from Frizzler's point of view, is it some, somehow a bluff to... Mm. Um, I think he's not running Mimic. Yes, yeah, that he, um, by putting the Parasite there to try and just kill off that Shadow very quickly, he's mm. saying, well, I want less less ice on that server so I can easily get through with Grypsis. Mm. Um, uh, and then saving the Mimic for when it's uh, more effective towards the late game, because yeah. that tends to be when the Wizard's Breakers are most effective. Is, um, yeah. slapping down it's actually a good play. If, uh, if he, he's trying to pass the idea that he's playing a Crypsis deck, uh, possibly, so it might actually force the corporation to decide, you know, I'm going to advance that shadow twice and I'm going to delay you, th not realizing that that's exactly what Fritzler wants. He wants the corporation to actually delay his own health. Mm -hmm. So let's see how he plays. He's got yet another hostile takeover. He's getting all the cheap agendas at the start, which is really good for him. But then again, that's three bad publicity. Every bad publicity is going to just just continue to hurt him. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. More than he knows at the minute because he does he hasn't seen any of the fixed strength breakers, mm. which I think is where bad publicity really shines. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, strength cheap breakers. You want re you really want the the last cost I take over. You really want it at the end of the game, but it seems he's going to go for the money. 
There we go. I can see why he did that, but I think I think that play there is really going to hurt him, mm. um, and he's going to realize it. Okay, so we're going to see the shadow go down and Fritzler going to run that server, and I think at that point uh, we're going to see the toll booth go up. Possibly, possibly not, because if he does raise that toll booth, he can't uh, protect his remote. So probably not. I think we're going to see the second shadow go up. And uh, Fritz is just going to break it and go through. But let's see how they play it. And uh, it's really interesting to see how much Fritz is holding on to that uh, sneak door beta in Imp. He really wants them as mm -hmm. the last moment. Probably he's waiting for his gin first, which is perfect for a sneak door host. Does he run Nerve Agent? Because I can see that... Uh, is Nerve Agent uh, in Cyber Exodus or not? Uh, it is in Cyber Exodus, yeah. So, he can't. Oh, it's not legal for the tournament, is No. It? Okay. There we go. So, run an RD, and if he raises that Archer, it's going to be cheap, but he probably wants to waste that viruses from Crypsis. But you can, you will really have to uh, start seeing uh, the corporations sweating about those bad publicity now. Because uh, Fritzler can just run infinitely without almost any costs. I mean, my late game um, wizard deck consists of a spinal modem and two cyber feeders. Frizzler already has that, basically, mm -hmm. um, with his uh, current setup. Yeah, so yeah. That's quite scary. Yeah. And he's I getting pretty much free access into R&D. Whoa, oh, there we go. Okay. First three-pointer. I think it's definitely swinging in there. Uh... Okay, if he scores uh, more agendas, I'm definitely we're going to see uh, uh, Tomatello scoring as many agendas as possible before he loses. But Fritz is... Uh, how have you found... Sorry, go on. Sorry, go on. <laughs> um, how have you found that in terms of the games that you've you, you've uh, spectated? Do you find that um, the mentality of the tournament, such that you know you have to score as many as many gender points? Yeah, yeah absolutely, can, absolutely. Do, do players make deliberately sort of dubious choices because they know they're going to lose? Yeah, yeah. Just to get those. Extra yeah, points? I've seen the games uh, where uh, the other player scored one point, and the runner basically went berserk. Yeah, he was completely uh, careless trying to get the corporation from scoring even one point and uh, because he was so careless uh, he actually l managed to allow the corporation to score that point yeah there was a situation where the corporation had four cars in his hand but the runner just kept running R&D over and over hoping to just snipe whatever he, he could. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we told him after the game, you know, the corporation had four cards in his hand at one point, you could have totally annihilated him with zero points. He was like, no! <laughs> ah. And now, now he has the three credits he needs to play, the, sorry, the three viruses he needs on his data sucker to try and run on uh, uh, HQ with uh, Mimic. There we go. I suspect he's going to play that on his uh, R&D. A very very smart game from Frizzler here, consistently running R and D, mm -hmm. make it look like that's his focus, and then suddenly the focus is going to switch to HQ. Yeah. Um, and assuming Tomato doesn't draw any more beefy ice, um, but uh, puts Frizzler in a strong position. Although one thing we have forgotten so far uh, in the past few minutes, that snare is in hand. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. It can hurt, but it cannot kill unless uh, the corporation manages to both draw 
uh, is uh, another Scorched Earth and a Beanstalk Royal is, I believe. Because even if he managed to fire off that snare, he won't have any money to follow Scorched Earth. And that is in if we if the runner doesn't clear tags immediately for some reason. So what cards from the um, new expansion did you uh, find very interesting? Um, oh, I have to bring them up actually. Um, Just make sure you won't close the game. The new um, program that uh, derases ice is also sounding very, very nasty. For... Uh, um. Is that the criminal one? I think so, yeah. Crescento or something uh, like that. Crescentus. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, going to. No, that is very strong. That is so so powerful. It's going to be an absolute credit denial. Oh, you brought a toll booth. I pay seven and then I remove it. <laughs> okay, he's going to go and make sure he has some points, even if he loses the game randomly. I definitely think the the biggest one, just in terms of. Um, uh, the versatility of it and the decks that it might end up popping up in a uh, false lead uh, the uh, neutral agenda mm -hmm. very very interesting i think it buffs certain decks but it does make deck building uh, more difficult for the corpse in terms of their agenda that's a, that's a very very interesting card obviously oversight ai um I, I'm, I'm curious about, um, because we build it, the new Wayland agenda, um, because um, so far it does seem like uh, all the agendas that they've released, cycle, mm -hmm. uh, have been almost deliberately underpowered uh, with, with the intent that they will become stronger as, as the carpool increases. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like this is very much the same. Um, Replicating perfection seems to be the one that's come out on top so far. I think I with think the new cards. cards yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, Zinteki yeah. have been severely screwed in the agenda game, except Nisei. All their other agendas are really lackluster, in my opinion. I, I mean, I, I think Fitali I has its place in uh, in a deck, but uh, it's very difficult to. Uh, it's not you know. It, it depends on the, on the runner very much mm. i mean it, it is i think it, it's it works because it basically means that the runner has to always run such that they're two credits higher mm -hmm. than they normally would have to be on the on the, in case it's a fetal ai they hit and they take two net damage and don't even get to do the agenda for their troubles yeah i think that's quite interesting so there we go the same is complaining the same game it's quite a waste of the my the uh Quite a waste of the deja vu, though, if you consider, if you think about it. I think, yeah, because because given that he's not even getting the two viruses out, yeah. um, I think that possibly could have waited. But so he's um, he's going he to go and to keep up his threat on R and D. Yeah, yeah, he's just going to trust it this turn. I'm surprised he's not playing Imp with all these R and D runs. Maybe he'll play it next turn. We'll see. It's a... Uh, oh, ho, ho. oh! That is not nice. That is not nice at all. I can't tell if Tomatello is uh, enjoying his um, slow demise or if he's uh, really frustrated. Yeah. Oh, Seesaw, pity he can't really do anything with it. His credits is not... He could with tag no him if he really wants to, but he won't actually do anything. With, with no resources to, to get out of that, um, yeah. and we we'll, won't even be within um, Scorched Earth range, really. Yeah. 
So that's completely it's useless. Good, yeah. Let's see if he's placing okay. that uh, wall of static in that uh, server. And I think if he finally plays that wall of static, we'll see Fritzel uh, going for the Corroder eventually. I think he's keeping his Mimic in case his uh, Clipses get trashed somehow. But imagine uh, how bad, how, how nasty Fritzel would have been if he actually had two Parasites by now. It was completely annihilated <laughs> Puerto Matello. That, uh, that uh, failed archer, I think, was all the uh, raids. Yeah, I think that was definitely the this, this swing point of the game, for yeah. sure. So close, so close. That uh, Crips <laughs> ended up being very important, after all. I, I wonder if uh, Tomatello just didn't realise that uh, with the bad publicity and the cyber feed, uh, um, he he did, he uh, said he he did say that he forgot about the data sucker. That's why he was in a rush to trust. He didn't expect the corporation, the, the runner, could actually do anything about it. But uh, the data sucker tokens were the two credits uh, that he needed to break the subroutines, basically. So they made the significant difference, and I was really I was. Honestly, I was surprised that uh, Fritzler forgot about archers. I thought he just ran with that in hand. Okay, he's going to get his melons back. I'm fairly certain about it. Oh, no, he's going to get... Uh, okay. That's... Mm, now, the credit generation from that. Although I suppose it does put him within range of Tollbooth, which is probably what yeah. he's considering. That is, well, however, a desperation play. It is. Would it? I mean, given that he's on three points, would it not? Do you think it would not be better for uh, to go for um, just try and get that project out of the squad? Um, possibly, yeah. But I believe. I believe maybe that's his uh, next move. We'll have to see. But on the other hand, he probably wants uh, uh, R and D to be safe, so he won't lose before he actually has the chance to do it. Mm. But at some point you have to you have to take the risk with R and D yeah. uh, if if you know that you know the runner can get through it. And at this point, that uh, Tolbu doesn't even hurt. You know, it's just the bad publicity that's going away. Uh, I'm pretty sure Fritz will say, "Yeah, okay, whatever. I'm just going to play this Nictor beta here and run your hand now because you don't have enough money to snare me." Hmm. I thought he is, he really didn't consider that at all with because it's so expensive and he wanted the money for mm. other things. I mean, if he didn't have those eight credits, he wouldn't have been able to raise those archers and his remotes and whatever. Okay, now, if Fritzler breaks off the run, plays down that sneak door, takes a credit, plays down the sneak door beta and runs, he can actually hit a snare without a problem. Of course, that will uh, allow that. No, nah, that Cisos won't really do much. I, d I don't. I, I, I'm not sure. I agree that uh, Tomatello is um, losing. Uh, uh, Tollbooth. No, I think he's losing. But I think the t the, uh, the the Tollbooth on R and D wasn't the the bad play. Mm. Um, I think what his bad play was was, was not it was going for a remote server too soon. Given that he was only drawing um, one point agenda, yeah, he doesn't true. really need to secure a true. remote server that early on. He true. wants to secure his centrals from the data sucker. True. If he had played that Hadrian's, he had played that Hadrian's on the uh, on the uh, R and D, he probably would have yeah. had a better time now. Much better time. Yeah. Because that that's that's very very difficult. Of course, it could have uh, it could have completely swapped the game around because uh, it could have meant that uh, Fritzler would have wasted his money on one run, and then uh, could have uh, gone for a sneak door instead. So mm -hmm. difficult to, to, to tell. <laughs> so he's just going to uh, check uh, what upgrade this is, and b why not? It's very cheap to break through. Cost him. Nothing, pretty much. 
So very good play there again. That that wall of ice is going to be annoying. So he can actually raise it <laughs> and uh, just tell him ah two, two tokens from your crypts. But still, it's going to be a weak a weak stop. I think all he needs now is to um, just slow Rizla down just enough to sc secure that Project Atlas because that could be enough to secure him the win overall. I mean, seven points to six is nothing to, uh, mm. to be ashamed of going into your second game. Yeah, no, no, not at all. I, I think, believe that's true. He's going to uh, try and uh, sneak that in, possibly by playing that snare first. I don't know. I think it would be a good play to play the snare in, the arc in that server because the runner... Normally, in a normal game, you would say, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever it is, I can leave it. But uh, as it is, he probably can't just ignore that snare if that face down card. So you could actually, if you have uh, the credit, you could actually make him walk into a snare. No. Mm. I suppose it's not the idea is not to trigger the snare, but just to waste the run. But does that really hurt Frizzler that much to waste a run, given that he can get through for so cheap? Uh, the problem, the, the, the thing is not so much to... Uh, is the Crypsis tokens, yeah. Is the Crypsis tokens plus the cards that he will lose. So he would have to... Ref he, he will have one turn to uh, recover. So uh, he won't lose because you because know, there's no way that Tomatello can get to the credits necessary to. Um, that's the thing. He would there. probably have to uh, um, just take credits until he has seven credits in hand or something, and then play the mm -hmm. snare. So he can play snare next turn immediately. Play uh, agenda. Interesting play there from um, Fritzler. He decided to just use uh, data sucker tokens to uh, avoid paying anything, so he can keep all his money. Which is somewhat good news for Tomatello, because it means that his hand is safe, so he can, if he does want to go for a snare yeah. into Project Atlas play, you know, he's still got that option, because neither of those have been sniped from hand. Yeah. Uh, the archer's pretty yeah. safe at the minute. Alright, let's see how he's playing it. Ah, Mercadus is decent. But of course he can't really use I'm suggesting he, I suspect he's gonna take the credit discard as this source. There we go. And now also I'm almost suspecting that Fritzer might even check that archives. Why not? He gets a data sucker out of it. He can keep the corporation honest. Oh, those those bad publicities are really paying for themselves now. <coughs> can really tell they they look so good, but hurt so bad. Yeah, it is. A cut. It is. Um, I mean, I, I very rarely play Wayland, so uh, I, I haven't sort of got the feel of um, hostile takeovers down yet. But I do feel like you know that the um, bad publicity against certain decks is going to hurt you so much more than the, the credit burst you get. Yeah. I, against other types of decks, the credit burst is enough. I think I would uh, I would rather get hostile takeovers in the mid game. To tell you the truth, in the mid game when you have some archers down, and um, you can uh, boost your economy without uh, completely ruining your late game or your tempo or giving mm. your opponents uh, a lot of tempo, uh, they're much better than the start. Many people just play them willy nilly at the start, but they can hurt mm. you so bad. You, you, you said that uh, one of my first games uh, uh, of Netrunner, um, Turn One Corporation plays a um, hostile takeover um, and scores it immediately. My, my response is to install a medium and then run HQ, hit two snares and die. <laughs> <laughs> one of my first Netrunner games that way. <laughs> I guess you, you thought, oh, this game is so bad. 
no, no. I was like, let's do that again. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. Many, many people are turned off uh, at the start because they may, they may play a runner or they may play a corporation and the runner can just run R&D three times and win. And they say, oh, this game is all about luck, it's crap, it's whatever. Or they mm. they may get uh, seesaw scores third, uh, third turn or something and uh, it just give up. So it's a game that your first games can really give you a bad impression overall. One of the games that I love comparing this to, um, do you know Twilight Struggle? The one with the Cold War thing. The, the Cold War, yeah, the US versus yeah, yeah. the USSR. Yeah, I know, I, I played I, it once. I, I love that game. Really? I didn't like it at all. I played I, it I once. It. <laughs> I played it once and I was really not impressed. Uh, the, the way that I see it is that um, because in that game, the USSR very much sets the tempo of the game mm -hmm. and it's kind of the same. The runner is able to set the tempo of um, many games in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Netrunner with their abilities to, you know, depending on how, how they can run, what servers they can run on. Yeah. Very much set the tempo of the game. Uh, and I've often found it's good for new players to play Corporation first and lose so that they can understand why they lost. Um, because if they play Runner and they don't know how to run, they'll just lose and feel like they got really screwed over. Mm. But as a Corp, because you know everything, you kind of see where it is you lost and yep. learn a lot from it. Yep. I often advise that new players play Corp first. Oh, well, we yeah. see some... Yeah. Some increased tempo in this game as well. Both players got some money out. Certainly got some money. <laughs> Question is, how can the Wayland expl exploit this money? He's definitely now within the range of uh, this, I I assuming this is what he wants to go for. I, I think it's probably his best players to try and get that, that project out of the scored. Hmm. But whether or not he possibly wants to... I really think he should do. actually play that snare down. And uh, hope and to see if uh, uh, Fritz is willing to take the bait. I think Fritz might even run that uh, server with a steam hack then, and will hurt so bad to lose uh, four cards in one hit. So yeah, Crescentus. I'm uh, really expecting we'll see that uh, get a lot of play in the uh, Anarch decks and uh, Criminal decks. There's a repeatable uh, emergency shutdown, I think you're yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> and it's really going to start hurting those uh, big guys decks quite a lot. But uh, on then again, that's why um, Oversight AI is so useful. Now this is interesting. If he plays the snare and the Matello runs it and the uh, Fritz runs it, he can double score serve him if he doesn't have enough, uh, if he doesn't remove the tag. Pity he removed that, uh, he threw away his scissors, but it could have been big, could have been really big. Because think about it, playing that snare, uh, yeah. the, the runner runs it, he gets three and um, then he removes the tag. The, the problem is the credits. Would he be able to uh, play that scissors? If he managed to somehow raise that Hadrian's as well, maybe yeah. But as it is, I don't think so. But anyway, he doesn't have the scissors, so it's probably a moot point. I think. Well, I, I think. I, I imagine he is sitting there thinking, it, it, um, "Damn, I wish I'd kept that scissors now." Mm. Because it would have it would have made a pot a tag and bag win um, yeah. well within his reach. Uh, I do think that it would be really um, interesting here if he can somehow um, get the runner to spend a lot of credits and then play a snare, which would force the runner to uh, run it uh, out of desperation, maybe with a steam hack, and uh, actually hurt him quite a bit. But. It's not meant to be. Let's see how it goes. He 
can definitely see that drawing that second earth, the second scorched earth has uh, changed things for Thomas Heller. He's now actually starting to plan out a, a route to victory because yeah. he's pretty much given this game up. Um, but that second scorched earth, along with enough credits to actually activate them both and the snare, mm. does that actually put him within the victory's grasp? So yeah, now, yeah. Uh, still, still, his uh, R and D is very uh, vulnerable. So. I'm curious to see how he's going to try and defend it. I suspect he may even try to play second Caduceus there. Quite a long game. Both players are very thoughtful about their actions. But it's a really, really good game. Some of the best I've seen in this tournament. Both players uh, are. Yeah, no, it's, it's been really, really good. Because, I, I, as I said, I mean, the, um, they're still both perfectly capable of winning this now. Um, okay. That's an interesting place to play the Caduceus. I think he's trying to make the runner on his hand. Yeah, I, 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 by playing a third ice, um, uh, given the runner's lack of running on, on HQ, I think what he's, he's almost doing there is saying, I've waited a long time because I've just drawn an agenda, mm -hmm. so I'm going to try and protect it by icing up HQ. Yeah. Uh, on mm -hmm. the other hand, it might backfire because Wizard does have his uh, sneak beta. And it might also backfire because the runner might just ignore his uh, bait and go for the R&D, which is very lightly mm. defended still. Do you, um, though, uh, it's, it's giving giving up one of his programs, um, I'm not sure if Fizzle would want to do that at this point, because uh, the two MU... Yeah, yeah, I think he's, he's going to look for his gin before he actually takes any uh, sneak doors. Yeah. And in any case, the stink door is more of a, okay. I'm pretty sure that you're holding a lot of agenda, so I'm just going to uh, keep you in, uh, keep you uh, uh, honest, uh, rather than um, because I've, I've seen him. He really likes to play that account siphon, and uh, okay, he's actually going to force the corporation to act, to raise those eyes if he wants to. Uh, it's a very clever card because if the corp pushes themselves to res all the ice um, such that they, no, they d don't really have any credits to siphon, mm -hmm. the runner just says, okay, fine, I'll just access the card instead then. Mm. Um, yeah. but, um, I'm not sure this is the it, best absolute point here because that data raven there, he can just res, I would probably just raise that data raven and let him uh, stay with that. It will totally wipe all his credits out and his actions. And uh, I would, st he would have enough time to play that snare down. So he doesn't realize that the cor th that's what the runner wants. He just wants him to uh, raise his eyes now. He doesn't really actually want to go in. He just wants him to raise the eyes. <laughs> it's an account siphon by stealth. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even need to trigger the ability. Yep. <laughs> So, interesting play there. He kept all his money to uh, make sure he can still pass through that archer if uh, the corporation declines to uh, raise that other level. So, what will happen now is the corporation is going to raise the data level and the runner is going to jack out. So, done. I think he played it wrong here. He should have raised just the data level. And. Uh, Told him, yeah, okay, but go through. It was going to cost the runner uh, his bad publicity and cyber feeder tokens to break that raven. And uh, then the whole of his turn plus six credits to clear the uh, tags, which is. He didn't even have. He didn't have enough. He had to um, get yeah. another virus. So if he, if, if, he just raised, uh, if he just raised the data raven, 
the planner would probably have jacked out and he would have had three more credits now. Yeah. Now the corporation knows exactly what he has and he wasted all his money. So I think it was a mistake there from Tomatello. It might actually cost him quite heavily. Because the corporation can now just ignore the HQ. There we go. Here come the money. All, all the money cards. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if he's going to discard the imp. He's already discarded one though, and he's lost mm. two of his deja vu. So if he wants to keep that, although I guess given his current MU, he's probably more concerned. I think he may even change. discard that steam hack. He has enough money to be able to keep it, to not need it. And that uh, that team might become very useful. No, he's discarded the money. Okay. I'm surprised he didn't discard the uh, the soul gamble. I guess the uh, the burst of uh, Stimhack and Show Gamble together um, is uh, so significant that if Tomatella managed to gain a large uh, economy uh, very quickly and put down some uh, bigger pieces of ice, um, at least having those two in hand would enable Frizzler to surprise run. Yeah, but I don't think that will happen. I, I don't think that will happen because um, Tomatella is so back in credit at the moment. I think the yes. advantage is there to stay now. I think so, but um, it, I, th I think I think I think keeping them is uh, is is a good idea, just on the on the off chance that yeah. um, Thomas Ellis starts stacking credits. Yeah, I think that that that, uh, that uh, Caduceus was very bad play. That that are even enough would have been enough to stop uh, to stop Fritzel from running. He would have to jack out, there's no, you know, because you continue on with three tags, you end up... Uh, he would end up uh, not tagged, but with no money. He, he would break out immediately. Uh, if, he, if he passed the data raven for some reason, yeah. Uh, if he actually took the tag, I, I don't think he would actually do that, he would just jack out immediately. There's no way he would, he would uh, do it, because he wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to break... Uh, uh, actually, he would be able to break the archer, and then with the money from the uh, the money from the siphon, remove all his tags. But he would be left with four credits or something. So, still good. Well, he'd, only, he'd still have one. He'd have one tag left over for. for um, uh, no, because he ran with his first action. So. Uh, because he had to, he ran with his second action because he had to put a counter on Crypsis. All right. All on. right. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that eleven then would have been more than enough to stop him. Hmm. Okay, so that was even worse play. I thought that uh, he ran with his first. No, yeah, you're right. The data over in uh, Res would have been uh, the best thing and keep some of that money back. Um... Okay. I mean, he's still working from the mindset that the, he needs to clear those Crypsis counters as much as possible. Hmm. He has quite a lot of cheap ice. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that Frizzle at the moment is just looking for uh, for his gin. What did he discard? For the gin, yeah. What? Uh, count siphon there. Oh, no, 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 that was what you were just... Uh, what did... Uh, sorry, what did... Uh, yeah. Didn't real. Didn't see what he discarded. Ah, uh, uh, the uh, wall of static, okay. And there's the last parasite. There's a gin, finally. Now we're going to see that sneak door and the imp. And I guess we'll see the gene go down now. Now the game is definitely going to be over quite soon. Nowhere safe at the minute. Not about to be. Not about to be. We're going to see an imp. I think. An imp and then uh, HQ runs now. And Tomatello, Tomatello now, Ooh. unless he plays the Project Atlas, he's um, in, a, in a big risk. Yeah, and uh, that Project Atlas is far from safe. Um, I think he's probably lost it already. The question is, can he somehow score those two, three points before that? Hmm. 
the beginning of the end for poor Doom Tomatello. As you can only use the imp once per turn, I think I think the best play for him would be to install that snare. Actually, if he installs that, if he installs that snare and gets to credits, it's probably going to be even worse because uh, Fritzer at that point can just ignore whatever it is, run few times, run uh, two times on a uh, HQ, and if it's not uh, what he wants, uh, which is probably going to be, uh, run that remote. But it might actually force Fritzler to, uh, you know, uh, run that play, run the uh, remote, hit a snare, and then. Uh, stop to uh, recover for a bit. That's my thinking. Yeah, that was my thinking. Because uh, Fritzel does know that he has agendas, two agendas. So, on the other hand, it's very likely that uh, Porto Matello will not expect a run on his uh, hand. So, still a snare, a snare play, I think, would have been, would probably be the smartest thing to do. Try and trick uh, Fritzler to waste one turn there. But I don't think even that would help you because, you know, Fritzler will run it, hit that snare. Um, and even if he takes a turn to recover, what then? What can Tomatello do? He can play another card there after the snare, but next turn Fritzler can just run again. He won't have the money to raise the, the Hadrian's. And uh, Fritz only needs one to virus token to break through. So I think he'll need the, um, Tomatello is between a rock and a hard place at the moment. He, he, he really is. And he does, it, it, the hard part is, is that um, Prisoner now has the ability to threaten every single server. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Tom Mattello doesn't know it. Um, and if he's sitting there thinking that his hand is the safest place, he's about to be proved very wrong. Yeah. Um, so he, ha he, he, uh, he has to do something kind of brave and kind of weird, um, I think, in order to potentially draw Frizzler away from the HQ. Uh, it, and he would do it without even knowing that he was doing it. Um, you know what might... I think the snare is the safest What place. could even actually work if he just plays an agenda and advances it twice? might actually scare Fritzler, who is playing very, very safe, who is in a very advantageous position, not to run it. Yeah, no, that you're very, very true. And uh, if, if it was the priority requisition, um, we get out of that, what's he got down? Oh, he could get the Hadrian's Wall out for free. Yeah. That would be an, an amazing play. If he true. Could, he, he probably would still, still lose, but you know what would be amazing? If he plays that priority requisition, advances it twice, and then Fritzler says, okay, fuck that... Uh, Fuck that noise, I'm not going to risk my game uh, to uh, face check a June bug. And he just says, okay, I'm going to run HQ and hit a snare. And then it's going to be... It could very well happen. Hey? It well happen. I, I can see that happening. Let's see, let's see how Tomatello is going to think about it. It's a... Uh, this game is so... Because um, now that the corporation is in such a disadvantage, is going to the place of risky plays. The, uh, the corporation can afford to take riskier plays and the mm. runner can usually wants to play safer just in case he loses uh, randomly. But I think it might he might not want to play that um, he might not want to play that priority because if the runner hits the snare he won't be able to raise that priority. So he might want instead to play the Atlas and advance it twice. And uh, then if a runner hits a snare, he can still finish advancing the Atlas. It reminds me of a, um, a thread on Board Game Geek that was started about a, a corporation's first turn, mm. um, where they had only one piece of ice, and they were playing against Chaos Theory. Mm -hmm. Um, and they had a brain trust in hand and a June bug. And the corporation said, what do you think is the best play? I said, I, th I think what you'd have to do is play the brain trust and advance it twice. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't think Chaos Theory is going to run on a yeah. server. It could potentially cost them four of their opening hand. Mm. Um, 
uh, and just let that agenda go and then and uh, the corp can potentially get a, uh, a fully uh, advanced brain trust out hmm. it's a it's a bold player no no two ways about it problem is i get the feeling that people are starting to uh, turn around and uh, go instead of, oh he played the first turn to advanced card i'm just going to check it because he thinks that i think that he thinks that i think so <laughs> yeah <laughs> i actually had a guy i was playing goddamn jinteki uh, uh, replicating perfection i put down a, a card a, a card and advance it twice he doesn't run it next turn advance it to four cards he runs it for advancement he runs it i'm like are you suicidal what the shit? <laughs> it wasn't a June bug, yeah? it was a, a, a PSF. And he just ran it without the infiltration, without nothing. He said, oh, I, I expected that if it was a trap, you wouldn't advance it uh, uh, to four. I was like, of course I would. <laughs> <laughs> but he was playing, really, that player uh, won against me because he was just playing suicidally. I was thinking, no, he's just going to uh, be afraid to run a full advanced card. Well, yeah, I just run it. If I lose, I lose. 50 50, you know, whatever. Mm. No, he's not going to go for the brave play. He's thinking his hand is secure. Uh, no. No, he Sorry? did play the snare. Okay, that there is. Okay, so yeah, I think I think I think the snare play is 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 a good one, uh, given his current knowledge. Mm. What we know, we I think we know that getting one of those agendas out of hand, which is extremely threat, being extremely threatened this yeah. time. And know. there we go. We're going to see the HQ run now. And unfortunately, that snare there is the worst thing he could have done. He should have gone for my initial suggestion. He should have gone for the twice advanced card. Of course, yeah, given the information he had, he probably could figure that uh, that was the thing. He may still not lose, let's see. But he probably will. There we go. And there it is. That was an absolute blinder of a game. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. There, there we go. <laughs> man pity pity he can't read our minds we we found out the perfect okay. strategy to save his game because yeah because i mean that hadrian's wall could have been enough um you know i mean he would have to get lucky with um Frizzler not hitting um his agendas with the sneak door beater but um you know that's almost uh, a guaranteed three points. I think you can get out of that, and then potentially get a score another. Win. I. Yeah, yeah, you disagree. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to stop the recording. Very GG. And uh, we'll go to the second game in a few minutes.